So let's get it started and talk about the uh, fixed asset. Up to here, we have been talking about current asset, dealing with financial dimensions and posting transactions to the ledger accounts. When it comes to the fixed asset, uh, consider those equipment that the company owns, they buy those equipments and then perhaps they're using it for operational purposes. Fixed assets are those type of things that a company owns for just operational purposes and not necessarily they're using it as items in their inventory that they're selling. So in this scenario, uh, in order to make it a lot easier, what I do, I switch to the fixed asset module and uh, I show you how to create a fixed asset and how to deal with some of the terminologies such as acquisition or depreciation. Consider, for example, an asset here on the common area. In this company, let's say we are going to buy a new machine. So the first thing you need to do on the common area we need to go and open up the fixed asset and as you see in this company currently there are none. Part of the setup of the fixed asset I show you how to basically set up necessary pieces of information in order to have a fixed asset because setting up a fixed asset if you would like to do a demo to your customer or perhaps as his partner it would be very overwhelming to just spend lots of time on the setup of the fixed asset. So as you notice the first thing uh, you realize is that the fixed asset group is necessary that's the main primary field that you need to set up. Since I already don't have any fixed asset group, let's go ahead and make one. So there would be a lots of navigation between the forms. I recommend you by the time you do the case study, make sure when the form gets open, you maximize the form for every single form that I navigate, I, I instruct you to navigate to. If I right click on the fixed asset group and click on a view detail, you can actually maximize this form. Uh, let's talk about this. This fixed asset group similar to the customer group and vendor group is mandatory but this is also very unique it actually put in together a couple of pieces of information in regard to valuation of the fixed asset and depreciation books of it so i'm going to get into the detail of it shortly but let's go ahead and give this a name since i'm going to let's say specify a particular item or equipment that is supposed to be bought i call it like for example machine so here the different types tangible assets are those assets that you can feel and touch and that would be similar to the vehicle or machine that I'm going to buy. Intangible assets are those assets that similar to IP intellectual rights or copyrights or licenses, let's say. They're intangible assets. Financial assets, they're literally uh, bonds, stocks, shares, uh, land and buildings, as the name indicates, you know what they are. And finally, goodwill and other Goodwill is like when a company acquire another company, uh, part of it, there are so many other pieces of assets that they don't mean anything to you and you have to write them off. For example, they're only interested in their, let's say, invention of a particular device they have made. But as soon as it buys it, then they don't need few departments, they lay them off. They don't need those operations in different cities, they close them down. So that would be a goodwill scenario. But if I go to the tangible in this example, uh, that would be the type of an asset I'm dealing with for this machine. And then as far as the major type, these are for business intelligence. You can right click on the major type and go to the view detail again. So this could be just a type that you can specify what is it that you would like to have in here. So here again, I call it a machine and I call it CNC, for example. Click close and I associate it with this. Would you like to have the fixed asset to use a automatic number sequencing? If you notice, minimize this for a second. By the time I actually wanted to create a new fixed asset, the fixed asset number is not set manually. So the question here is, if you like to specify a fixed asset group, would you like that number to be automatically set? So you can select this value. So because of it, you have to specify a number sequence. So I'm using my own. Uh, auto number barcode, would you like to associate a barcode with this fixed asset? You could also select that. I use a same number sequence which I've already created for the demonstration. The property type, by default, is a fixed asset, obviously. And if you're going to depreciate this or do the acquisition, you have to use a fixed asset. Now, let's talk about acquisition and depreciation a little bit so you understand what I'm talking about very briefly. When you buy something and you pay for it, that not necessarily means you have acquired that asset. Uh, example would be right here. I chose CNC because it's a good example when it comes to purchasing a large uh, and high volume or high value equipment. Let's say a CNC machine when you pay for it. First of all, you pay for it maybe in full or maybe over time, but the CNC machine doesn't come in one piece. There are huge equipments. Probably you get it, but it takes a few 
days or weeks to be installed and then it takes another couple of weeks for you to have your stuff to be trained on so then after you tested it and work with it then you can actually start saying that okay change the status to acquired and then I can start paying property taxes for it then after a while after a year or two perhaps the machine doesn't have as much value because you have used it is a used machine so you don't want to pay as much as property tax on it so what you need to do you need to depreciate the value for it and then pay less taxes for it. so we're going to talk about depreciation shortly. So the fixed asset is something that you can have subject for appreciation or depreciation, obviously. You can have also a piece to be added to it and adjust the acquisition or have multiple acquisition and have the value to be higher. Continuing property is something that you're not necessarily going to depreciate, but you would like to keep track of it. It's like cell phone in your company that um, your company has given you a cell phone, but they don't necessarily want to depreciate that. Location. Unfortunately, it doesn't map to the warehouse or any location there. It's just additional field for, let's say, a business intelligence, say where the asset is located. So it's just an address, really, that you could specify. So it's good for business intelligence. GIS layer is actually giving you geographic information system, which requires a third party in order to keep track of the asset itself. It's very similar to GPS. It just uh, pinpoints and maps your asset where it is. Replacement cost factor is usually a percentage in which it let you know uh, how much would it cost you in order to replace this asset. You could put like a real number here. Like for example, I say it's going to take me 1.2% of the actual cost of the fixed asset in order to replace this. In short value, is very similar it's just like what would be the insured value factor if I wanted to insure it so for example that would be something like 1.4 in order to insure it capitalization threshold is a field that allows you to have a stop in regard to not to go lower than this value that I put in here when I do depreciation so I can probably say the value of this machine shouldn't go less than like three thousand dollars after that it doesn't depreciate so let's go ahead, say if you buy an asset that is a member of this group for amount of let's say $200,000 and as you depreciate it over a few years as soon as it reaches the $3,000 then you don't depreciate anything further so that would be something to consider now I save this I need to also take a look at other values the value model and depreciation book mm -hmm.